Hello, and welcome to the first mini lecture from the third module of this course. So we just uh, spent a few days learning about how we store data in binary. Uh, and so now we want to move to how we store the program itself uh, in, in binary. Uh, and that'll uh, involve talking about both machine code and assembly code. So uh, today's uh, topics include just a basic introduction to these concepts uh, and then an overview of how uh, operands and opcodes work. So for now, we're going to uh, take a look at computer systems and we're going to focus on the single CPU components for now. So the, the ones that are primarily involved in just having a single program running on a single CPU. So I've uh, gone ahead and simplified the diagram a little bit. Uh, and this is what's called a von Neumann architecture. Uh, you have both programs and data stored in memory. Uh, and then you have a CPU, which is connected to the main memory via some sort of bus. So there is uh, something called a von Neumann cycle, which is the process that the CPU executes. Um, and there are three major phases to this. We'll also learn later on this semester that those phase, that there are uh, more phases than that uh, in, in some architectures. Uh, but for now, the, the main uh, cycle is that first of all, the CPU will fetch the next instruction from memory. Um, once it's there, it will decode that instruction to figure out what it's supposed to do. And then once it has decoded the instruction, it will execute the instruction. Uh, and that may involve reading more data from memory. It may re involve uh, changing registers. It may involve writing data back to memory. Uh, so this process just repeats over and over and over again until the program is done. So um, at the very low level, uh, instructions are encoded in binary using machine code. And machine code is, as we saw before, a variable length encoding of opcodes and operands. And we'll define those terms here in just a second. So the, the program itself is stored in memory alongside the data. It's just more bytes, uh, which is, again, why it's important to know the context for those bytes, uh, to know that they are machine code instructions and not some sort of data. Uh, machine code is usually specific to a particular CPU architecture. Uh, and so machine code that is written for one kind of CPU generally will not work on another kind of CPU. Uh, and as you can see here, the machine code looks very different from the original C code. So here's some C code for an add function. And here are the actual bytes of machine code that it, it turns into. The uh, instructions themselves and the format of the bytes are specified by an instruction set architecture. So the one that is the dominant uh, ISA right now is x86-64. This is dominant in the uh, workstation and server markets right now. It is enormous and complex, and there's no way we can learn all of it this semester. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to learn a little bit of it, and then for the rest of the semester, we're going to focus on a simplified form of it called Y86. You should also be aware that there are are some other ISAs out there. Uh, and uh, most of these are smaller. All, all these are smaller and simpler than x86-64 and are uh, widely used in some markets. So for instance, ARM is widely used currently in the embedded and mobile markets. Uh, power is used a lot in high performance computing and supercomputers. Uh, and RISC-V is a newer architecture that uh, is used a lot in CPU research and is, is actually growing in the industrial market now too. All right, so you may also notice that uh, the bytes themselves, as they're encoded, don't really seem to ha make a lot of sense by themselves. And so typically, we don't work directly with the machine code uh, in terms of the raw bytes uh, and the raw byte values. Typically, we work with machine code in the form of assembly code. So assembly code is a human readable form of machine code where every line or every instruction uh, is in it written down as a single line of text. Uh, and there are a couple different formats for this. Uh, we're going to use what's called AT&T uh, because it originally came um, uh, <coughs> from a research uh, division of that company. Um, assembly can contain comments, which are denoted using the hashtag or pound symbol. Uh, assembly code is generated from C code by your compiler. Uh, in our case, that's GCC. This is uh, by no means a simple process, uh, and we're going to treat that as a black box this semester. So we're not going to look inside of the compiler to see how it translates from C down to assembly. Uh, this is a fascinating process, uh, and I do teach a course uh, at JMU about this. So if you are interested in this, 
you should uh, think about taking uh, CS432, which is our compilers course, as your advanced systems elective. Um, once you have a machine code, you can extract the assembly code using a disassembler uh, on stew. Uh, OBJ dump, object dump, is one such program that you can use in order to look at the assembly code for a compiled executable. Um, and so we're studying all of this because this helps you to debug, optimize, and secure your programs. Uh, in addition to just the fact that uh, you can now start to work with the machine at a very low level. So working at this level gives you almost direct access to hardware. Uh, we're going to gloss over some of the uh, some of the ways that the architectures split up uh, machine code instructions into uh, micro instructions. Um, but for now, we're just going to uh, assume that the machine code instructions are running directly on the hardware. OK, so uh, a couple of the pieces here from our diagram. We have the program counter, which tracks the current instruction. So it's kind of like a bookmark. It just helps you keep track. Uh, it, it, enables the CPU to keep track of uh, the next instruction to be executed, and it's the address of that instruction in memory. Uh, this is also uh, referred to as the instruction pointer. Uh, there is the arithmetic logic unit, which executes uh, the opcode of instructions. So this is what kind of instruction it is. And in assembly, that is the uh, code that appears at the very beginning of the instruction. So for instance, push or move or add. So today we're going to focus on some very basic opcodes and then we'll learn a few more uh, over the next few days. Uh, and then there are, finally in our picture, there are places to store data uh, and uh, so there are various ways of accessing that data. So uh, there are registers uh, and there are uh, there is memory. So those are the, kind of the two main locations. So either something is in a register or it is out in main memory. And we'll learn more nuances about that later on this semester. But for now, that's uh, a, a useful abstraction. So uh, an operand is uh, something that is either in a register or uh, in main memory, or it's an immediate. We'll define that here in a minute. Uh, and so uh, values that are in registers are quicker to access, uh, but there is a limited there are a limited number of registers. And so main memory can hold more data um, at the expense of uh, taking a longer time to access. So that's the basic setup. So we're going to be writing assembly code that manipulates the computer uh, at a very low level by manipulating the individual registers uh, and memory locations in the program. And we're going to do that by uh, writing assembly code instructions that consist of an opcode uh, and operands.